Welcome to our lecture online. In the last couple of videos, we showed you a technique called implicit differentiation to find the first and second derivative of a particular function. And the function was 4x squared minus 2y squared equals 9. And we we're supposed to find the first and second derivative with respect to x. Hmm. So, how did we do that? Well, we took the d dx, or the, we took the first derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation, and then when we worked it through, we ended up with dy dx being 2x over y, and then we found the second derivative being 2i squared minus 4x squared over y cubed. Now, as we're taking a look at that and, and working with uh, the editing of the video, my wife said, well, why can't we solve this equation for y in terms of x and then take the derivative? And I said, well, yes, you can do that. But typically, the reason why you don't want to do that is because it makes it very difficult. It makes it kind of a messy equation to work with. And that's why we tend to prefer using what we call implicit differentiation, where we simply take the ddx of both sides and then continue to refine that. So what we're going to do now is show you that if we did not do that, if instead we solve this equation for y, which I did over here, so this becomes y equals the square root of 2x squared minus 4.5, then essentially we can take the derivative of this and the second derivative, and we should end up with the exact same answer. So we're going to try that. So I don't like radicals, so then I wrote it in terms of this to the one-half power, and so let's now take the first derivative of this. So we end up with dy dx is equal to, take the exponent, which is one-half times 2x squared minus 4.5 to the minus one-half power, as we subtract one from the exponent, times derivative of what's inside, and the derivative of what's inside would be 4x. Simplifying that, we end up with dy dx is equal to 1 half times 4 is 2, so we end up with 2x times the quantity 2x squared minus 4.5 to the minus 1 half power. So now that we have the first derivative, dy dx, now we want to go ahead and take the second derivative, and since we have a product, well, we have to use the product rule. So let's come up here where we have a little bit more space. So then here I write d squared y dx squared. In other words, the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the first, which is 2x, times the derivative of the second. Now we bring the exponent to the front, so we have times minus 1 half times 2x squared minus 4.5 to the minus 3 halves, that should be a 3, 3 halves, like this, times the derivative of what's inside, so that would be times 4x plus the second, which is 2x squared minus 4.5 to the minus 1 half power, times the derivative of the first, which is 2. Now we probably should simplify that. So I have a 2 and a minus 1 half, we have a 4x, let's see here. So this ends up being a minus 4x squared times 2x squared to the minus 4.5 to the minus 3 halves power. And then we have plus 2 times 2x squared minus 4.5 to the minus 1 half power. And then the trick is realizing that we have this quantity here to the minus 3 halves. And again, to the minus 1 half, we will factor out a 2x squared minus 4.5 to the largest negative exponent, minus 3 over 2. So this becomes the quantity 2x squared minus 4.5 to the minus 3 over 2 times what's left here is a minus 4x squared. And what's left here would be plus 2 times, now notice, oops, that's a plus. Now notice that we have to multiply this times 2x squared minus 4.5 to the first power because this times this will give me back this. So that's how we uh, simplify things. Now we can multiply everything out here. So we have this is equal to minus 2x squared minus 4.5 to the, oh, not minus, that's a plus, 2x squared minus 4.5 to the minus 3 halves power times. So here we have a minus 4x squared 
and a plus 4x squared. So they cancel out, and now we have a minus 4.5. But I'm missing something, I think. What's that? Yes, there it is. I was missing something because I have the 2 there, so it's minus 9. There we go. That's it. Okay, so let's rewrite that. So this is equal to minus 9 divided by, well, here we have 2x squared minus 4.5 to the positive 3 halves power. Now, did we get the same answer? Because notice here, that's what the second derivative with respect to x was equal to, right there. And we end up with this instead. But is that the same thing? Well, if we go back, notice that 9 is equal to this. So minus 9... So minus 9 is equal to the negative of this. In other words, that this is equal to... Minus 9 is negative, that would be 2y squared minus 4x squared. And then notice that 2x squared minus 4.5, let's see here, 2x squared minus 4.5, well, let's see, hmm, hmm. No, if you just y to the third, look at your y there, mm -hmm. in the middle, y is equal to one half of that, it's equal to the square root of that, that is 2x squared minus 4.5. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That's right. I have this here, so y is equal to this. And I have 2x squared minus 4.5 to the 3 halves power, which is this quantity cubed. That's it. That's right. I wasn't seeing that. So then this can be replaced by y cubed. And now we end up with the exact same result that we had for the second derivative of, as we have over there. So that is how we can see that we don't have to use implicit differentiation. We can solve this equation for y and then use our typical techniques to find the first and second derivative. Or what we can do instead is we can leave it like this and take the derivative with respect to x to the both sides of the equation and then do it again for the second derivative. And either way, you will get the same answer unless you make a mistake somewhere. But Barring any mistakes, you can see that either method works, and so now it simply becomes a matter of what you, what you prefer. And notice that in this particular case, it's not too big of a problem by solving for y, but there are examples where it would be extremely difficult at that point to try to find the derivative, because it gets to be a really messy equation, and implicit differentiation is then the preferred method. Who invented implicit differentiation? Um, pretty awesome. Hmm? It's pretty awesome. It's a great technique. I have no idea who came up with it. Someone a lot smarter than me. Well, in a way, if you do it in a quote unquote old fashioned way, you are doing implicit differentiation. It's just that one side is so much easier than the other side. I don't think it's called implicit at yeah, that but point. In a way in a way it is, right. You still take the ddx of both sides, so you take the ddx of the left side and the ddx of the right side. So yeah, it's essentially it's still the yeah. same kind of thing. Yeah. It just, you don't think of it that you way. Don't, yeah, that's correct. Okay.